Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, as well, from me and Fabian. Uh, we will be co-hosting uh, this talk. Um, I'm, my name is Lubomir Dolezal, uh, and as um, together with AOX, we are mostly working uh, on projects from European Space Agency, and we are going to present a talk about a piece of software that we use qu for quite many of them called ViewServer. Um, and the main point of it is that it provides us with um, WMS and WCS services for satellite data. That's what the main purpose of it is. Uh, on the QR code, you can have a look at our demo deployment. You can browse through it uh, throughout the talk as I will be, and we will be uh, discussing various parts of the whole system. Um, first, I will start with a question. Who of you have ever uh, heard about a software called ViewServer? Hands up. A few. Uh, who of you have used ViewServer? None, because you, otherwise you would not really be here, right? Because you would already know everything. Um, in the talk, uh, we will describe what it is composed of, um, what it can do for you, how to deploy it, and because it's an open source piece of software, how you can actually use it and contribute to it. That would be uh, the ultimate goal if one of you or more actually become contributors to the view server software stack. First, why would you use it? Um, view server is a Python based piece of uh, software components, which is um, used for managing um, and providing OGC compliance services as a WMS, WCS for your satellite data uh, that you want to serve to people and to clients um, via standard interfaces that everybody understands. We have um, tried to provide access um, to our services mainly with respect to cloud optimized formats. Uh, because that's how we get the best browsing um, performance. Um, we have, of, co of course, tried to uh, go with the microservice architecture uh, because it helps us to deploy only parts of the services that we actually need for a concrete client. The whole, open, uh, the whole stack is open sourced. It's an MIT license. You are free to use it however you see fit. How we work on it is in two ways. Um, first we provide write the services uh, which uh, the view servers um, fields, which means the uh, customer is not really interested what the software behind is, as long as there is a WMS uh, endpoint and that serves images of satellite data, all good. In other cases, we are providing the configuration and the maintenance and the implementation of new features themselves. So both of the uh, cases are uh, present among our uh, projects for European Space Agency. This is the ultimate goal. When you deploy a server, uh, of, when you deploy view server, this is what you will probably end up. Um, it will be um, WMTS or WMS uh, rendering of your satellite data in various predefined styles. And um, the client will be able to interact with it using WMS parameters if they see a need to update the rendering themselves. So how do we actually get to it? Well, there are a few components of this system. Um, uh, there is usually a client uh, that we also ship together with view server. There is some cache component in order to pre-seed tiles and then serve them. We are talking about raster tiles. Uh, there is the rendering engine itself, which is the core of the whole view server. And we need to get the data into the system somehow. So first, the rendering. Currently, still, the rendering is based on an open source piece of software called EOX server, which is a Python-based Django application, uh, which provides the endpoints and the service handling. The rendering itself is using map server underneath another open source piece of software that you've probably already heard about. What, uh, as for the capabilities themselves, um, the core of the EOX server that we use mostly is the WMS endpoint with the flexible rendering. Basically what happens is you define how your satellite data structure matches to the layers that you want to serve in the end. That means which band composition and which value stretches will in the end contribute to the RGB result that gets rendered. Um, this means 
usually we want some kind of flexibility. We have three custom WMS parameters uh, for band selection, setting the stretch, and uh, using some kind, of, some kind of custom rendering variables for higher interactivity with the clients. Um, the rendering stack is quite configurable in a way that it allows a lot of mathematic expressions using um, rendering, uh, uh, using the expressions inside the um, request itself. We allow uh, masking or CQL for selection of the only a subset of the images, and you will see examples of that uh, a little bit later. Exactly here. Um, on the left side, you see a false color composite, which is uh, first you define a set of bands that will be used for the red, green, blue result of the f uh, final image uh, with a custom stretch. It's the usual uh, operation that all of us want to do when serving uh, Earth observation data. The, the middle one is um, showing SQL filtering based on cloud coverage. So it, when we register together with our uh, metadata, the cloud coverage, we can use it in the WMS request for filtering just a subset of products. The last one is an example from an existing pro project using vector masks also for um, masking out clouds. Another example is using um, the pan sharpening operation on the fly using the GDAL pan sharpen functionality underneath for um, giving really the, from pan chromatic band and the, the true color high, uh, lower resolution band the pan sharpened image. Thanks, Lubo. Um, yeah, there's, this is the Lubo talked about the previous iterations of, of uh, our renderer. Um, we also are working currently on the next generation, which is called Stacture and Teravis. Um, Stacture, uh, Stack stands in the name. This is why we chose it. Um, quick hint, uh, use uh, project names which are easy for uh, not being handled by autocorrect. Stacture is, is not such of those, uh, th so those names. Um, yeah, um, why did we choose to uh, make a new rendering system using that? Uh, it's basically for the next generation of, of uh, APIs out there. So this is now totally stack-based, so we don't even ship our own database anymore, but we simply connect to a stack API uh, that we then use as a, as a provider for, for scenes to then render. Um, it is also modernized in terms of, uh, of, of interfaces that it provides. It's also serving now the OGC APIs, um, not just the previous OWS ones. Um, it is still somewhat early development. It's, it's still in the making, but we are making fast progress, and our aim is to, um, yeah, at some point, replace the server as the main rendering engine. As the name implies, it consists of two main components, uh, Stacture, which is basically the front-end facing part of it, and Teravis, which is the, doing the actual rendering work, so that the hard work. Um, um, the idea is that we have a stateless thing, so it simply connects to the, to the so Stack API or other Stack sources. Uh, it's also uh, very much scalable, so we can also individually scale the front-end or the back-end part, Teravis or Stacture. Um, because Teravis is doing like the hard work, we can scale this individually. So this will help in cloud developments when we are serving um, thousands of clients. Also, it is capable of doing uh, serving of, of data cube, so multidimensional data by default. Um, it's also accessible like the other parts of the view server project um, and also MIT licensed. Okay, how does this look like in a, in a deployment form? So we can see here on the right-hand side, we see all the interfaces, OGC, OWS interfaces, also open search, and we also want to provide a stack API at some point. Um, on the left-hand side, we can see the, the whole, the, the whole um, sources that we connect to, so PG stack, for example, or stack API, so we try to provide as much as, uh, so a diverse range of, of, of uh, stack sources. Um, Stacture is basically the entry point. Uh, it will translate the request and, and the stack items uh, to a, a custom workflow format, which is JSON-based, which is sent to Terrorist, which in interprets it, and then send out the result. Um, we are making use of various stack extensions and also the core format, obviously, but stack extensions. So for example, using the um, the, the virtual assets extension in order to provide, for example, band composition or band math on the fly. 
uh, we're using the render extension in order to make like uh, color scale ap application and so on, or band selection, or like uh, hue saturation, um, um, yeah, corrections and so on. And the classification extension we're using for color mess, for example, you can see here an SCL file. So this is a sidecar of the of a Sentinel-2 scene, and there's this common color scale that we simply apply, so we can also render this. Um, I briefly mentioned it, what is a TerraVis workflow. This is a uh, JSON-based format, and this basically describes the uh, atomic operations or, in order to produce the result. Um, each node in this direct, direct acyclic graph, or short DAC, uh, represents an atomic operation, like load the data, warp the data, or something similar, like arithmetic operation and so on. Um, in order to not bloat the, the, the duck too much, we also allow reusable parts of this, which you can see on the, on the right-hand side. So this, this yellow box is basically reused multiple times, as like you would call a, a function. Um, also, um, since each node is basically an atomic operation, it's very easy to uh, parallelize. So we, we, yeah, we can scale this quite well with multiple CPUs. We try to um, broaden the work of each individual step. And we can do many steps at once. And we are smart enough to then collect and combine the results back together to a single product. Right, the next component is the cache. Uh, the cache is based on the very popular map cache uh, library, uh, map cache software, uh, which does the, all, the, all the heavy duty work. Uh, we are making use of the, the tile, uh, the time index DB, so where we basically know, okay, which time indices are available. Uh, we query that yeah, for, for better caching so that we know uh, the request is, is targeting these and these and these tiles, and we can simply combine them back to a single result. So we are pre-configuring it. We are basically don't change anything with MapCache. It's, it's a good piece of software. On the other hand, we have a client which is connecting to either the, the cache or the, the dynamic renderer. Um, this is based on a software called uh, EOXE. It's a little bit rusty on the edges, but it's, it's still working perfectly. So you can get a nice rendered uh, map interface where you can simply query the data, look for, for, for collections. We also in the bottom have um, uh, something, I think we call it this time slider. It's basically a histogram over time, and we can, you can see this, the, the temporal distribution of your data. So it's also quite nice that you can zoom into this time slider like a map and zoom out and pan around. Um, you can also like discover the, the, the products that you have searched for. You can select them. You can do uh, additional downloading, processing, and so on, all through this GUI. Uh, this is a details page, so we can simply click on, on, a single, on a single product in order to get some more details, metadata information, and uh, nicely rendered views. Yeah, the last part is how to actually get data in. Um, this is the ingestion chain. This part, uh, it's, it's, it's consisting of multiple parts that you can basically pick and choose. Um, we have two different mechanisms. So we have the push-based mechanism, which is called the ingestors. You simply push items into it, and it will then try to register it. Uh, but the other way is the harvester, so we can harvest upstream sources like open search or stack APIs, and this will pull them uh, one by one into the system and uh, register them. Um, if necessary, we can also have a pre-processing chain where we can make, for example, cloud-optimized GeoTIF out of it in order to improve the rendering performance. Then it goes through the registrar and we basically registered it to the database. I think we also have some, some preceding facilities in order to have certain zoom levels already in the cache for the clients to, to use. Right, I think that was the ingestion. I th yeah, I hand over to Luba again. Okay, and I will finish with listing the capabilities in a unified way. Uh, a lot of these things were already mentioned. Um, we are uh, quite successful in scaling this uh, for large satellite archives, which means uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of products usually split into multiple collections, so it's not one-to-one, -on -one -one, but the time uh, dimension helps us to really granularly pick whatever the client should uh, rent, uh, should access and we render that. Um, we are heavily using cloud storage, so we have uh, accessors for both S3 and OpenStack Swift. We are actively using both. Um, the local access is kind of a relic from history. Um, many rendering scenarios are supported depending on what the project actually needs. We can configure it. 
and the direct product registration is used when already the archive contains uh, cloud optimized geotiffs then because we use stack as an internal data transfer protocol um, therefore if it if there was if there is already a stack, it, we would be able to register it directly. The web client is kind of an add-on that uh, is not always used because usually the, just the WMS and WMTS services are used. Uh, one deployment example is an agriculture application using the WMS directly for individual image chips, for individual dates. So imagine you have a um, parcel somewhere uh, on your field and you want to measure NDVI index over it throughout the whole half a year or, or a year. This is an interface that we have ready for that for uh, our agricultural uh, domain uh, application. Um, and coming back to the community, uh, you can use your server. How would you do that? How would you do that is uh, we have a Helm chart containing a reasonable set of default values uh, for deploying on um, smaller or even larger uh, clusters, which means we are using Kubernetes uh, as our main source of deployment, but we also have some conversions to Docker Swarm for those environments who, for example, don't have managed Kubernetes. Then it just comes to defining how your satellite data structure maps to the rendering result that you want to provide and how much pre-processing you need or want to do. Um, there are several links to our documentation and for the Helm chart itself, we have a set of schemas so that whenever you are creating your deployment and you have an invalid structure of your values, it will already scream at you early and you don't need to deploy your failing environment over and over again. How you can contribute, uh, first let us know what you would want to use Vue Server for. Maybe uh, the capabilities are already supported and it's just a matter of configuration. Uh, you can also try the minimum example of the uh, EOX server itself uh, without all the nice things of Vue Server itself. Um, and um, the whole code is open source, it's Python based application, very accessible I would say to uh, developers. Um, and if you have any missing features, like uh, for example, uh, yeah, I don't know what would be missing, but if you have missing features, also let us know in the issue tracker. The repository is public, even though it's on our company, GitLab. And I'm ending a little bit early. Thank you very much for your attention. Wow. You are giving some time back, that's so nice. So uh, we have some time for questions. Uh, so I think we have plenty of time, so please. Thank you for the presentation. You mentioned that you are uh, publishing with some OGC APIs, and I was curious to know which ones are you, you are using. Um, so right now we support OGC API maps and uh, coverages in the making. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, ties at some point as well, but I think ties is like orthogonal to to mm -hmm. to, to to maps and coverages. So yeah, ties as well. Next question. Yes, sir. This is great work. Um, any thoughts around supporting vector data and rendering vector data? So we, we're using vector data like in support of our raster data. So we're mainly focused on raster data. We use it, for example, for masking out images, like for, for the, for the yeah, um, valid areas, for example, or the footprint. We can, we can show the footprint as well. But yeah, it's a second grade citizen to us. So yeah, mm -hmm. we are yeah, raster data. Uh, you managed S3 support. Uh, do you need to somehow pre-process the data to, to make it viable to pull it from, from S3, or how does it work right now? Well, uh, we are using the great capabilities of GDAL. Thanks for that, even. Um, so it works best with cloud-optimized formats, obviously, but it will also work with any other formats because this is uh, how GDAL works. Um, yeah, this is why we have the pre-processor in order to like make pre-selections, use uh, cloud-optimized formats like GeoTiffs, yeah, it works best that way, but it's it's not a requirement. Any more questions? We have time. Oh, thanks. 
so I guess for the actual rendering part, you're, you're moving away from map server, right? Yes, unfortunately, oh. yeah. <laughs> no, that, no, it is what it is. Yeah. What, what is the actual way that you're rendering then? Are, are you using like uh, GDAL or? Yeah, we're using the Python API of GDAL. Um, we were thinking of like using Rasterio, but like GDAL Python API still has the best set of features, like all of the, the um, pan sharpening and the dem functionality that we also provide. Um, it's, yeah, it's just available through the Python API, so that we're using that. Thank you. There is one town uh, that's kind of Hello. Have you considered using OGC API processes between Stacture and Teravis? Yes, yes, we did. So, um, yeah. Um, we, def we, de we decided to define our own workflow format, uh, but we also thinking of like standardizing the interface between uh, Stacture and Teravis. Like this would be a great idea yeah, to use processes. So you you mentioned you are using uh, both the Stack API and uh, Stack uh, Stack uh, Static uh, Catalog, right? Are you using any tools or is it native implementation that you you have there? That's actually a good question, but I, I think we are using our own um, interfaces in order to to, 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 to access them. Um, PyStack might be in the mix somewhere. I think we're using PyStack items as models in between this, the, the systems, but I'm, I think we're doing our own requests. I'm not, not too sure about that, and to be honest. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thanks so much. Uh, Thank you. For